check this for me. All right, just pretend to be me for a second. Hey guys, this is Cody. Welcome to our page, our YouTube channel. This is Hood to Homestead, sponsored by the Room Upstairs podcast. Go check them out. <laughs> uh, today we're going to be learning how to make sourdough bread from starter to finisher. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Cody from the Homestead, and I wanted to show you guys um, what I like to call my cheater sourdough. Okay, so about a month ago, um, my family and I, Bird, me, and all four of our kids took a trip to Europe, and at some point, I'm sure we'll tell you guys all about it, um, we got a chance to go to Rome and to Paris, and it was amazing, but one of my very favorite things that we did on that trip is my two older girls and I took a bread making class from a chef in Paris who owned a bakery there. And so it was really fun. We got to learn just tons of new stuff. And so I wanted to bring some of what we learned to you guys. So I am fairly new to sourdough. Um, if you are a seasoned sourdough bread maker, then this recipe just might not be for you. Um, or I guess you could stay and learn how the French chef makes it. Um, but for me, I was really excited to get to learn um, some really cool tips, um, a couple of tricks about what he does or what they do um, in, in Paris to make sourdough and for it to be um, consistent and delicious every single time. So stay tuned until later in the video and I will give the recipe or if you want it written out, it will be written out in the description box below. But um, the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys are just a few of the things that he did differently than I had seen anywhere online. If you are trying to learn about making sourdough by reading blogs or watching videos on YouTube. Um, it, for every video that tells you one thing, there will be a video or a blog post that tells you exactly the opposite of that. And so it was really nice to have somebody just right there that I could ask some questions to and he could give me some information on. So the first thing that he did was gave me a recipe for an actual sourdough starter. And if you guys are interested in that one, I will have to do a completely separate video on how he did it, but it was different than anything else that I had seen. And I will say that for me, it worked so well and was really, really fast in comparison to what I have seen um, other places online. So if you guys are interested in that, I did make my sourdough starter from scratch based on his recommendations, um, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about having um, your sourdough starter already ready to go and making um, bread from that. I started with my sourdough um, right when we got back, which was a little bit less than a month ago. So it is not very old. And if you know much about sourdough at all, you know that it takes a while for your starter to kind of build up and be strong enough to actually rise a loaf of bread. Um, and so this recipe made me really excited because it meant that I was able to make bread from my sourdough starter a lot quicker. Okay, so the first tip that he gave me, which I thought was unbelievable and has really helped me have consistent results every single time with my sourdough is that you use sourdough for the flavoring, but then to make your bread actually rise, you use just yeast. And he said that the reason that he does this is because his sourdough um, can be a little bit temperamental, his starter, and he's had his for decades and it can still cause some problems. It depends on the weather, it will depend on um, the temperature in your room, it will depend on uh, the time that you have to let it sit and ferment. Um, it will depend on how how watery or how thick your sourdough actual, your starter itself actually is. And so he said for him, in order to have consistent results every single time, he adds just a basic yeast, just an instant yeast to his bread dough. And let me tell you, it has made such a difference. So the yeast is super important in having consistent results. And then another thing that you wanna make sure that you do to have consistent results is to have a scale. So I have had this one for a long time. 
Um, this is actually a postage scale that my husband got me to ship some stuff that I was making. You just want something that is going to measure grams because that's what um, you're gonna measure your flour in whenever you're baking bread most of the time anyway. Another thing that he was telling me that was super important is the flour that you use. Actually, he said that the flour is probably the most important part of um, making a good bread. But I use the Jovial Einkorn now. It is like a yellow, really powdery, really lovely smelling flour. And this is actually what they use most of the time in Europe as well. So this flour actually has a lot higher um, protein content, but it has a lot lower gluten content in it. And so a lot of people in America are having problems digesting gluten, and part of that is because the flour that we use just has so much gluten in it that we're just consuming way more than our bodies can actually handle and break down. And so switching over to a lower gluten flour, such as einkorn, um, can really help with that. So he suggested trying that, and I will say it is a little bit pricier when it comes to flour, but it's totally worth it for me because I bake bread every day for my family. And so I wanna make sure that I'm giving them something that is actually going to be good for them. Now, I do still use unbleached all-purpose flour sometimes um, for other things, especially like muffins or pancakes or waffles or things like that. But when I'm baking bread, I like to stick with einkorn whenever possible. Um, so yeah, I do einkorn, I do yeast, and I measure everything that I um, put in my bread dough and that has given me consistent results every single time. So the recipe, which is I'm sure what you guys are after, right? Yeah, so he actually gave me the recipe. He emailed it to me after we left uh, that he uses for his bread there. So obviously it's going to be a little bit different. I don't have his seasoned starter. I don't have the flour from France that he uses, um, but this this bread dough recipe, this bread recipe really, really, really comes as close, I think, as you possibly can come to having bread in Paris um, at your house. This recipe only has very, very basic ingredients, the things that I've already told you about, and water and salt. So you're going to start with 600 grams of einkorn. Um, again, you can use all-purpose flour if you want to, but make sure that if you do, you choose all-purpose unbleached flour. It does make a difference in sourdough, whether you're using bleached or unbleached. So make sure that you choose the unbleached all-purpose flour if you are going to use anything besides einkorn. That works really great. And then to the einkorn, you're gonna add a tablespoon of salt and a tablespoon of dry active yeast or instant yeast either work just fine um, and then you're gonna just mix that up together and add a cup and a half of warm water and a cup of your sourdough starter and that's it that's all that goes into it so you're gonna mix that together one thing that my chef buddy told me is that you want to be really careful to not over mix over knead your dough. Um, so you just wanna mix that up until it kind of starts to pull away from the sides of the bowl a little bit. I maybe will knead it for three minutes on the stand mixer, and then I will take it off, put a towel over it, set it aside, and let it rise for about an hour. And this is what you have. So this one's been rising for about an hour. It has definitely doubled in size. And so now we are able to actually start making our French loaves. I do, though, whenever I am ready to start working on this, this is the point that I am going to actually preheat my oven. So you want your oven to be super, super hot. I am preheating mine to 475. In order for it to be hot enough, you want to have it preheated for about an hour before you actually start baking it. We're ready to start forming our loaves. So the first thing that you wanna do is flour your surface. Um, again, you can use all-purpose flour for this if you want to. Um, I'm just gonna use einkorn because this is just what's sitting here for me. Um, but you wanna make sure that you have access to this flour right by you because this dough can get kind of sticky and you can see it kind of pulling out the sides like that, um, little spider webby. It's really pretty dough. 
but um, it can get a little bit sticky. I'm actually going to take a spatula and pull it off the sides. So this recipe will make three French baguettes. Um, you can use it to make just one loaf. I can also use the same recipe to make 12 cinnamon rolls. It's what I it's what I use for my sourdough cinnamon rolls. If you saw that video, if you didn't, go watch it. Um, that's a fun recipe. I make that usually once a week for breakfast. So we are going to make sure that we have copious amounts of flour down here so that we are not sticking at all. And you're going to split your dough into three. Just try to get it as even as possible. Which can, can be kind of hard to do when you're just eyeballing it. If you really wanted to get specific, then you could use your scale, but I don't care about that much. So I am just going to start with this gorgeous ball of dough. It is kind of sticky, but that's okay. That's what we want it to be. Um, and then we are going to roll it. So you just want to form it kind of into a loaf like that. And then you're going to pat it out. This is the technique that he showed me. And then you're gonna take the top half and roll it over to the middle. And then you're gonna roll it over one more time. Make sure we have flour underneath us. Roll it over one more time where you have that seam on the bottom. And then you're gonna pinch that seam closed. And then roll it out a little bit more until it is the length that you want it to be. So that's how we shape our loaves of French bread or a baguette. Now you have a couple of options on ways to um, cook this. I have been cooking mine on just a cookie tray, like a, a flat baking pan um, of some sort, or you can order a baguette pan and that's what this is. And this is just, kind of scalloped so that it is like cylindrical shape as it cooks, it doesn't flatten out. Um, so I'm gonna use that this time. And you just set it in just like that. I will form these other ones and show you what we do after that. Okay, so we are back. It has been about an hour and these guys have been rising. They're so pretty. Um, they already smell good. Now, one thing that you will notice with einkorn is that your bread is going to have um, a little bit of a yellow tint to it because the flour itself should be a little bit yellow. That just happens to be the color of the wheat, so don't be alarmed um, if that happens. So the first thing that we need is a super sharp knife. So we are going to score it. I am not gonna lie. I don't know why <laughs> we score the bread, but I do know that it was very, very important to my French chef friend. Um, he actually told me a really cool thing about the scoring. He said that it is the baker's signature. So however you see someone um, scoring bread consistently over and over, that is their signature on that bread. And so at every bakery that we would go to, we would look and see um, how the signature was different. And it was super interesting because it was different. Everybody did it differently. Um, so I'm just going to do a super basic, super sharp knife. If you have a razor blade, even better. I just don't keep one in my kitchen, but I do keep really sharp knives. So I'm just going to light pressure, quick down the middle, light pressure, quick down the middle, light pressure, quick down. The I'm not sure why, but my camera cut off. I already have my dough in my bread dough in the oven, um, but before I put it in the oven, one of the things that I always do now um, to get that like crusty, kind of chewy, crunchy crust on the outside um, is I spray it. So they would use a steam oven to get steam to get that crust on the outside. I don't have that in my house. I'm sure you don't have that in your house, so I just use a good old spray bottle give my bread a good spray and then I stick it in the oven. The last thing that I do before I close the oven door is I throw just maybe five or six pieces of ice in the bottom of the oven, not on top of the bread, um, on the bottom of the oven and that will steam up and give us a super yummy crust on our bread too. 
All right, my bread has been baking and I have been outside in the wind, which is why my hair looks like this now. <laughs> um, but it's done and it smells so yummy. And I pulled it off of that pan so that it could cool um, just on a cutting board. And you can kind of see the shape that that pan gives it. A pan is not necessary. You can absolutely just use a cookie sheet. Um, I just grabbed it off of Amazon. Um, just as a, a fun thing to kind of play with um, and it does it does make it look like bread from Paris which I love um, but it already tasted like that and so yeah I'm just excited to <laughs> to add that extra extra little touch of Paris in um, where we scored it I don't know if you can see that but where we scored it um, that bread just busted open and it just smells so 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 good you can smell that sourdough um, and I'm gonna let this cool for a little bit as long as I can handle it and then I'm going to bust into one of these guys that is our cheater sourdough I bake it a lot we have baguettes um, just like this for breakfast a lot now um, I will do everything up to the very last rise and then put that in the refrigerator and let it rise in the refrigerator overnight, um, which actually is more of a bulk fermentation with how you would do a sourdough. And then I will score it and cook it um, first thing in the morning for breakfast. So it's a, a pretty quick thing that we can get in the oven for breakfast on just a regular weekday, but it is super, super yummy. So I hope that you guys liked it. Again, if you want the recipe, I will make sure that it is down below written out in the description box. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.